Well, what happened in Iraq was that uh, a vacuum was created, and there are probably a lot of reasons for that. Uh, primary reason is Prime Minister Maliki, who I think uh, failed to really try to bring that country together. Uh, at the same time, combined with that, I think, is not having a presence in Iraq. And uh, we had planned to try to maintain a force of eight to 10,000 U.S. forces there uh, for the primary reason of supporting their military to keep them in the right direction, support their intelligence operations to keep them in the right direction. And I think to a large extent, keep pressure on Maliki to hopefully stay in the right place so, you know, my experience was that uh, if, you, if, you really, if we really leaned on him and made it very clear, and, and frankly, we were providing significant military aid. We were providing F-16 F fighters. We were providing other forms of military aid. I think we could have had the, the leverage to kind of push him in the right direction. So are you saying then that President Obama's failure to put pressure on Maliki to keep 10,000 American forces in Iraq has had a direct consequence today of allowing Islamic State well, to move into the country. You know, it's, it's difficult to, to say what, what history uh, would have been different But you are here. suggesting that the American forces might have stopped the situation we have today. I, I, what I'm suggesting is that we would at least have had a better chance. If somebody had said to you a year ago, this is the situation we're going to be in in Iraq now and Syria with Islamic State, would you have believed them? I would not have believed it would have been as bad as, as it is. Uh, I didn't believe that uh, the Sunnis would be as discouraged as they are, and that uh, some of that resulted in some of these foreign fighters going into Syria and becoming part of ISIS. And, and I think it's fair to say that uh, although we knew that there were extremists in Syria, that uh, there are very few that kind of uh, looked at ISIS as that larger threat that it became in terms of invading Iraq. You've run the CIA, you've run the Pentagon. Do you think this is an enemy that America can defeat? I do, I do. I have tremendous confidence in our ability to uh, defeat uh, ISIS. And I'll tell you why, because, you know, we declared war against Al-Qaeda after 9-11. And uh, this was a very similar kind of enemy, as fanatical and as dangerous and as terrorist as, uh, as ISIS was and more. I think what's going to be needed here, though, is a very long and sustained effort. This is going to be much longer uh, in terms of our ability to ultimately disrupt and destroy them. And it's going to take time. And that's going to be the issue, uh, question that the American people are going to have to face, the question that the world is going to have to face in terms of the coalition we've put together, is whether or not we will stick with it and make sure that we, that we follow through and take this to the final victory. Leon Panetta, thanks very much.